A lot of history books have been written about Vail in their early years, but what about the community that followed and the community it is today? That is going to be the topic of discussion at the Bookworm this week. We have John Horn Cates. He's the author and a longtime participant of the Community Way here in the Vail Valley. John, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. All right. So this book, The Making of a Community, The Vail Way, kind of pays homage to that pioneering spirit that was when Vail first began. but it didn't stop there. Exactly. I think, uh, you know, the, the founders, Pete Seibert and Bob Parker and his companions really set the tone. Mm -hmm. They came out of the out of the 10th Mountain Division, as most of us know. And that, I think, established a, you know, a sense of, of working together, mm -hmm. collaborating as a group of people. I mean, they didn't have anything, really. There was nothing here, as you know. Yeah, there was no mining industry or but anything. You think about it, it was, a, it, was a, it was a blank slate, a sheep pasture. And so they had to really rely upon one another for basically everything. Yeah. And so that sense of, of uh, collaborating together, being really entrepreneurs, taking, taking risks. So the people that followed those initial founders, many of them are still here. You know, the Grams Hammers and the Gorsuches and so many others that, that really took a risk and, and sort of bet their whole lives on the fact that this was going to work. Yes, definitely. And, 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 and nobody knew that it was going to work. <laughs> you know, Rod Slifer said, you know, we didn't know. We just said, we think we can do this. Let's let's get going. Yeah, yeah. And people would jump on the bandwagon and support and, and work and put the, the their you know their sweat equity into it as well. Oh yeah, totally. It was a it was a, it's a wonderful story. I think mm -hmm. if you think about what we now have here, what we benefit from, was really founded by people who were who were entrepreneurs, who were collaborative, who, who really created something, yeah. I think, great. Well, and Pete Seibert, what was his vision and how did he create it? Well, he's from uh, Sharon, Massachusetts, and he, as a young boy, um, he and Maury Shepard, who I'll mention further in a moment, uh, together used to go out, out back and ski down this little, you know, little bump behind the house. And they started talking about building their own ski area, even as teenagers. Wow. And then as he came into the war, uh, was, was wounded, uh, came back and went to Aspen and still had that dream of building a, a ski resort. He, he didn't think that Aspen was really the place. And so he, he resigned his role there and went to hotel school in Europe mm. to learn how to really, uh, I think, understand guest service. And while he was in Europe, he saw all the tremendously successful ski resorts. And he said, I want to build something that, that rivals Europe's best. And so that vision continued to develop as he came back then and went back to Aspen, met Earl Eaton, who knew about Vail and knew about the back bowls, but no one else could see it because it, you can't see it from the highway. No. And so Pete and Earl got together, and uh, in 1957, they... they uh, they started to move forward on the plan. Now, what's a good example of maybe a second generation Vailite creating a yeah. vision of their own? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think the best, there's many examples, but I think one of the best ones, ones we know about is, is Kim Langmaid, mm -hmm. uh, who now is on the town council. Uh, she is a little girl uh, growing up on Beaver Dam Road, and you're kind of messing around in the ponds and kicking stones down the road, had this idea about a uh, about natural science, about the outdoors, and uh, went to school, got her education initially, and, and came back to Vail and managed the uh, Vail Nature Center. And she thought, you know, this is something that we should really pursue. So she goes up to the, the Teton Science School in, in Jackson Hole, which was really a full-blown science school, uh, saw what they were doing there, how they were doing it, came back, started Gore Range Natural Science School in Redcliffe in an old school, built it up, went, went back and got her PhD, came back to, to the science school and convinced them that we ought to build this campus in Avon and help raise the money, renamed it Walking Mountains. And it was just her dream all the way through. Yeah. But also she made it happen. She, she got the pieces in place that she needed like her education, mm -hmm. the, the a, a fundraising group that would you know, build the 
building, and Oscar Tang, who gave the land. Yes. So it's a wonderful story. Oh, it definitely is. And just one of many stories that are in here. And we're going to learn a little bit more on Thursday night this week, 6 p.m. at the Bookworm. Right. The books will be on sale as well, so we can check it out. I think this should just be a staple in, yeah. in anyone's home yeah. here. Anyone that loves Vail, this could be a great gift idea as well. A wonderful coffee table book there that we go. can learn more. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, John, for coming on. So once again, 6 p.m. at the Bookworm. Uh, you can find out more. John will be doing a little uh, presentation of the book and some Q&A to learn how Vail really became the community it is today. We'll be right back.